Welcome to Korea Today. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for having me this morning. Mm -hmm. So could you briefly tell us what the International Vaccine Institute does? We're all about vaccines. Mm -hmm. We are a group of people, researchers, in fact, on the campus of SNU, mm -hmm. Seoul National University, doing research and development of vaccine for the poor people of this world mm -hmm. with the aim of creating, developing new vaccines, improving existing ones to control infectious disease. You know, the ones that are killing a lot of small kids today. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing there. Okay, and the organization decided to base its headquarters here in Seoul. Out of all the places, why, why was it Seoul? I would say because of Korea. Yeah. And uh, it was a very interesting story. The, um, in the 90s, in fact, there was an organization called the Children Vaccine Initiative mm -hmm. that decided that there was a need for a place where to work on vaccine for poor children. And somehow they, they, they had a vision that it should be in Asia. Mm -hmm. And UNDP, you know, the, UN Nation, the United Nations Organization for Development, mm -hmm. uh, took that the responsibility of preparing a kind of a, a request for proposal. And it so happened that the Korean proposal was the best oh. because of the quality of science in Korea, mm -hmm. because of the quality of the offer that the Korean government made. If you come on SNU, you will see a very nice building, a facility that was built mm -hmm. by the Korean government. Mm -hmm. So all that made, and because of the environment of this country, you know, that the place that is very dynamic, mm -hmm. and I think that that made it at that time to take the decision. Okay, so this wasn't, this is not your first time visiting Korea. I came for the first time in 1981. Oh, 1981? <laughs> yes, yes. Wow, yes. that's a very long time ago. <laughs> Okay, so um, any progress in <laughs> the white gray hair? <laughs> okay, any progress uh, since you took office in November uh, in terms of develop development in the um, vaccine industry? Um, I would say uh, at the institute, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of you know the institute was has worked a lot on vaccines against diarrhea. You know that that's a killer in developing countries. One mm -hmm. of the first cause of death of young children is diarrhea and uh, the institute has developed has worked on pre-qualifying means in fact bringing to market mm -hmm. the vaccines again cholera we're working on typhoid mm. so let's uh, move slightly on a different topic i hear you recently visited north korea what was that like what was it what was it three weeks ago you said? three weeks ago yes yeah. we did um, ivi had a first program in north korea that started in 2006. Mm -hmm. The idea that at that time it was to build capacity, means train people, develop a lab to diagnose. You know, it's very important in vaccine to understand the disease before introducing the vaccine. It was stopped, unfortunately, because of problems between uh, the North and the South. And more recently, we decided to go back because kids are in need. They need vaccines. Mm -hmm. They need, we need understanding. We need to help the medical profession in North Korea to understand a little bit better the epidemiology. Mm -hmm. Gavi, that is paying a lot of vaccines for developing countries, has decided to pay for vaccine in North Korea. So we need to help to prepare the introduction mm -hmm. of those vaccines. So that's why we went back there to have a scientific exchange with local community and mm -hmm. prepare the next steps that are going to, we hope, are going to be supported by the Ministry of Unification. Okay, and there's another big project apart from the one that's going on in North Korea, but uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, I hear. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundations are one of the, ba the, the large funders. You know, we have, we have two main funders in IVI, mm -hmm. the Gates Foundation and the Korean government, mm -hmm. So they, that are two, plus the Swedish government. And um, we work with them on a certain number of projects, thanks to the funding of the Gate Foundation, we have developed the cholera vaccine mm -hmm. that is used today. We're working on a bivalent vaccine, mm -hmm. typhoid, paratyphoid, mm -hmm. supported by the Gates Foundation. We're doing some work on understanding typhoid in Africa with the Gates Foundation. We're working also on dengue, you know, that fever which is given High by the fever. mosquito. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we talked about the past, we talked about the present. Now, how do you see uh, Korea playing a role in, in terms of the, uh, in the vaccine industry in the future? If we could, with the, the 
first, I would, if we could develop in Korea the possibility to have, like it was done in the past for hepatitis B, to give access to vaccine like rotavirus, like flu, like HPV, you know, that virus that gives cervical cancer to mm, women, and okay. we can protect against that today. Mm -hmm. But we don't do it in developing countries because it's too expensive, only in a limited number. So if thanks to the development in Korea, we can give access to more people, I think that Korea we have, will have played the role that it played for hepatitis B. Because I know that a lot of people want to do that in Korea. Mm -hmm. I know they have industrial objectives as well, but that would be my dream. All right. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. It was a pleasure talking to you and thanks for answering some of our questions. Thank you. My pleasure.